So, in the last lecture, I had shown you how to calculate uh, given the CPM network and then given the uh, durations of each activity which we denote by T i j. Then I had shown you how to calculate the early starts of nodes and late starts. Right? So, you remember that calculation and then I had also shown you that once um, you come to the finish point, then of course, we take the um, late finish also here as same as early start. Uh, so, for this node it will be 30 30 and so for example, and then you can trace back uh, the critical path <coughs> I showed you that also. So, here for example, for node 7 uh, both the early start and late starts are uh, same because this is a critical activity and then uh, this way we go on. So, therefore, I told you that to compute the critical path you just have to show see how this calculation came about or this calculation came about. So, for, for whichever activity uh, the, the um, early start or late start got calculated that will constitute the one of the critical activities. So, then your critical path actually came out to be. So, this was your critical path right and then uh, 4 5 um, this is 2 7 because you see each of them has uh, the same early start and late start are the same. So, this was your critical path. We, uh, I showed you this calculation. Uh, of course, the uh, network I have chosen is little different from what we had last time. Okay. Then I also said that you see the nodes are events. For example, uh, if you look at node 4, then it tells you that this is the completion of activities 1, 4 and 2, 4. Right. And of course, 1, 4 and 2, 4 cannot begin like for example, 1, 4 cannot begin till 1, 2 is S 1 is complete and similarly 2, 4 cannot begin till S 2 has been completed. So, in a sense a node 4 indicates the completion of all these 4 activities. So, node, node, nodes represent events. Okay. And uh, so, then we uh, computed the early start and late starts for example, this tells you that you must not be here later than 7 because it is a later start because if, if you delay uh, the point this number here, then the other activities the following the successive activities will get delayed. So, these are events, but and so the critical path we showed you, but uh, the manager also needs to know uh, the uh, the uh, early start late starts of activities because he has to concentrate he or she has to concentrate on the um, uh, completion of uh, all the activities of the projects so we need uh, uh, some more tools for the manager to be able to manage the project uh, pr properly and so we'll define this for example ecij is the early completion uh, time okay sorry completion uh, time of activity i j right? and this would be e i that means early start of node i because the activity i j will begin at node i. So, the early start of node i plus the completion time of the activity i j. So, this will give you the early completion time of activity i j and similarly you want to compute the late start of activity i j. So, that will be late start of um, activity i j which will be l j. So, because j denotes the completion of activity i j. So, late start uh, late um, completion of or late reaching of node at node j minus t i j. So, that will give you the late start and you can immediately see that now you can have this concept of slack for each activity because the manager needs to know which are the activities which have slack and so maybe you can uh, the manager need not concentrate so much on uh, the activities which have slack, but um, has to concentrate on activities which have no slack or comparatively less slack than the others. So, this is the kind of uh, tool that the manager needs and so we are here we will define. Um, okay. So, if you want to um, just get a feeling for these uh, uh, numbers. Then, for example, I'm compute, computing this here. I'm saying that the early completion time of activity S1 will be see early start plus the duration 2. So this is ECIJ, right? And similarly, the late start would be L1 minus 2 because L1 is the uh, <coughs> S1. So L1 is 4, and then um, uh, this minus the uh, that's what I'm defining the. Uh, yeah, T i j L j minus T i j. So, this would be 4 minus 2 which will be 2, uh, which will be 2. So, the 2 things should be the, uh, so this will be uh, therefore, uh, the activity uh, S 1 can actually begin on the sec uh, after the second day. See here, we are saying that S 1 because of this activity S 1 uh, this number is E 1 is E S is 0. 
right. But when you look at the early start of or late start of activity S 1, it can begin after the second day, because uh, its duration is 2 days. So, therefore, it will still be over on the fourth day and so this activity can begin, right. This will not get delayed. This is the idea, hmm. what I am trying to say. So, therefore, you need to know these numbers also. So, here L s i j is 2 and you see then we define the slack. Slack is L j minus E c i j that means, the late completion or late time for node j minus the early completion or late start of activity i j minus the early start. Right? So, therefore, this would be say for example, here you see this would be if you subtract these two numbers or you subtract this. So, 4 minus 2 and 2 minus 0 that is your slack and if you want this is a good check for you if, if you want to make sure that your calculations are correct here then this is a good check that this number should be equal to this number and that gives you the slack for uh, each of the activities and this is a very uh, useful tool for the manager. So, um, you can check for some more activities for example, if you want to look at 1 3, 1 3 this difference is 3 and this difference is also 3 right and you want to look at the early start for activity 1 3. Uh, so, this is 1 3 right and we said that early start plus the duration right early start plus duration which is 6. So, that is 6 right and then uh, you want to look at um, so, this uh, for 1 3 we are looking at. So, this is 6 and then late start would be 5, because here the uh, L, L 3 is 9. So, 9 minus 4 would give you 5, right, which is different from this here. So, for example, activity 1 3 can actually begin after the fifth day, right, and so on. So, and then of course, you check the numbers 5 minus 2 is 3 and 9 minus 6 is 3. So, this gives you a feeling a little more feeling about uh, which activities to concentrate on and which can be slackened a little bit. So, that the manager can you know uh, use all his energies and so on in trying to see that the project gets completed on time. Okay. Now, of course, one can also um, and um, I did not think that it was really necessary to go into it, but anyway I will just define this term for you. Uh, see you can fine tune the slack, because there is also this concept of free slack, which is the amount of time by which an activity can be delayed without disturbing the early start of all its immediate successors. So, which um, would be something like um, you know uh, you can look at the uh, slacks for each. Okay. So, uh, of course, defining this would uh, require a little more effort and so on, but one can look at it uh, you know while, while you are reading uh, some more literature, but anyway. So, you can fine tune this concept of slack time and uh, you know, there is something like free slack, because uh, the manager may also not want to delay the early start of certain activities. So, then uh, the immediate predecessor uh, the amount of free uh, amount of slack that you can use for that particular activity should be uh, is, is equal to the free slack. So, th these are these concepts. Okay. Now, another computation that I wanted to um, uh, I mean another point I wanted to make was see here when we made these computations I took the um, due date to be 30 days. For example, for this particular uh, project, uh, the um, uh, project is ending on the 30th day. So, then I took it to be uh, the due date also, but it is possible that the due date may be different from the project completion date. And uh, so, if if your due date, we, which we denote by D, is greater than your um, LT, which is also equal to ET in our calculation, right? Then you see um, project this number D will be bigger than thirty. So then uh, there'll be a slack for each of the critical activities also because if this is more than thirty, this will be more than twenty-four and so on. So the uh, the um, slack will percolate or the difference between the due date and this number that will percolate to all the critical activities also. And of course for the other activities also the slack will go up by that amount. So uh, that is. Uh, happy situation, because the <laughs> manager then has even slack time for critical activities also. But in case the due date is less than your um, project finish time, then you see there will be negative slack and then there is more cause for tension and so on. So, anyway uh, you can still talk of slack being negative, it is possible right, but um, 
obviously, the manager cannot for example, for this project, the manager cannot in any way uh, complete the project before the 30th day. Right. So, if your due date is less than 30, then there will be some penalty or something, but then even then the manager would try to uh, see that the project does not get, get delayed beyond this number, because then the penalty will increase. And of course, um, and in the next lecture, I will talk to you about uh, project crashing and I will show you that with um, uh, you know we can, one, one can try to reduce the duration of a project by uh, you know using more resources and capital to uh, expedite certain activities. So, that part I will discuss later on with you. So, then it one can also handle the case when the due date is less than your LT that can also be possible. Uh, the next question that comes is that uh, is it possible that if you if you uh, add more resources for example, you put in more labor, you have more uh, you bring in more equipment and so on whatever it is can you try to shorten the project. And of course, shortening the project would mean that uh, you are going to uh, spend more money, because you will hire more labor, you will you will use more resources whatever you are using. And so, uh, the question becomes that, uh, but then if, uh, if the project uh, takes a long time like if you can shorten the duration see associated with uh, the duration of the project there are other indirect costs I will explain in a minute. So, then uh, uh, the question arises is there an optimal duration of the project. So, I will talk about it in a minute, but here for example, uh, as I said that you can if, if you if you the linear programming formulation linear programming formulation can also be linear programming formulation would be here if you say that u i is the uh, completion time of u i denote is the variable associated with node i right that is uh, and denotes the and denotes it's uh, the uh, denotes the time of its occurrence Occurrence. That means, the when will this, uh, for example, when will this uh, uh, event take place? That is, when when will all these four activities get completed? So, u i is the variable associated with node i and denotes the time of its occurrence. So, then um, uh, what do you want to? Uh, so, here, um, yeah, you want to find out, uh, let us say, uh, because u s we will always take as 0. So, you want to find out um, minimize u t subject to. So, now here the thing is that you will write um, u i plus t i j less than or equal to u j, where t i j denotes the, uh, so t i j is the time for activity, time taken by activity i j or the job i j, job activity whatever you want to call it subject to u i plus t i j less than or equal to u j. So, here this will take care of this thing for example, when you want to um, look at node 4, then you see the corresponding constraints here will be what, just for node 4 I want you to, I want to write down for you. So, here this will be that uh, u 1 plus 3 is less than or equal to u 4 but you will also have this constraint to say that u 2 plus 3 is less than or equal to u 4. So, you see it will take care by itself. So, for example, here this cannot start see this one if you look at this node it will be 2 plus 3 5, but this one is 4 plus 3 7. So, your u 4 should not be less than 7 and these two constraints together will take care of uh, the fact that u 4 will satisfy this thing. And so, this will this is a uh, reasonable, but you saw that uh, we really do not need the linear programming uh, method of solution, because the network is acyclic. And so, a simple labeling procedure gave you the uh, labels uh, UIs that you require by just uh, going along and labeling the nodes. Right. So, this is what it is. And now, uh, let me uh, talk to you about uh, the crashing. Uh, that means, so, this is what we call network crashing. So, I um, will um, 
work out the, I mean I try to give you what are the issues involved and then uh, we try to um, uh, come out with a method for um, uh, come to finding the optimum duration of the project. So, let us continue with network crashing. So, what I am say saying here is that project cost is of two types. Okay, this is a direct cost and indirect cost. So, as I was suggesting earlier, direct cost would be uh, the cost associated with a particular activity. That means, the number of uh, lab, the, the amount of labor and other resources, whatever machinery you require that is specific to a job. right? And the indirect cost is actually the cost related with the whole project, because you may hire premises, you may hire managerial skills, you might subcontract and so on. If the subcontract will certainly, uh, because if you subcontract certain jobs, then they will come under the direct cost for a, uh, for a particular activity, but the indirect cost will be basically uh, the uh, cost related to the whole project, which you then divide, because the project, uh, uh, the, the indirect cost will be related with the uh, duration of the project. And uh, the idea here, is, and so what you are suggesting is that, see, if, if the activity takes place at its normal, uh, 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 so this is, sorry, this is not cost, this is normal time. If an activity takes place, um, gets completed in its your normal time, then the cost involved, the direct cost would not be as high compared to the uh, cost when it uh, actually gets completed during its crash time. So, that means, there will be certain a time associated with an activity uh, uh, to which I mean the time you can you can actually try to uh, compute complete the activity within that time, but certainly you cannot reduce it further than the crash time. So, you cannot uh, perform complete the activity in time less than the crash time and normal time is the normal. So, you have some concept of uh, what resources, what labor and other things you would require to complete the job and so uh, this is this. And the indirect cost of course, because the uh, if you complete the activity an earlier time, then the direct cost would be less, sorry in, in crash time, then uh, the direct cost would be less and the direct cost. So, the indirect cost uh, gets in, uh, starts increasing with the duration of the project and the direct cost uh, uh, gets reduced when the project uh, time gets uh, delayed. Right? So, uh, you have to think of, uh, you have to come up with the duration of the project, which is the best trade off between direct cost and the indirect cost. Right? So, when you have these, uh, this is a very simple presentation of the cost and then you see the your uh, uh, total cost. So, this is your total cost curve, right? this is your total cost curve and the uh, minimum will rise somewhere here between the crash time and normal time for each activity and then of course, you will add up and find out for the whole project what is the optimum duration of the project. Okay. So, these are the two costs involved and um, uh, you can, um, yes, so uh, the, um, the managerial skills are required to, uh, you know, really uh, find out what would be the, uh, 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 what, what would be the, uh, how would you compute the uh, cost for each activity and then of course, the cost of the, uh, the indirect cost, these figures are most of the time available, because the activities are uh, deterministic in nature and so you know uh, what all is needed and so on. Okay. So, then um, yes, so now uh, we have this diagram and then we can first try to formulate this problem as a linear programming formulation. Uh, okay, I would call it linear programming formulation, if I do not have the integer requirements for T i j, the completion time if it can be treated as a continuous variable, fine. If it's a, if the uh, requirement is in terms of, uh, uh, if the T i j's are required to be integers, then it will certainly be uh, integer linear programming problem. Okay, so here now we are going to define C i j as the crash, uh, as the you know, if you're given the crash cost for the activity and the normal cost, the difference because crash cost will be higher than the normal cost, and then normal time normal duration of the activity and the crash time. So, the difference. So, this ratio will give you the rate of. So, this this we will say a uh, slope of slope or, or rate 
of crashing. Okay, so, this will be the rate of crashing for each activity i j. Once we have this, then I can um, and let me uh, denote this time by uh, a i j. Uh, sorry, this let, let me this denote this by b i j, because I have uh, yeah. Oh no, this is this is b a i j. Okay, because uh, t i j is greater than or equal to a i j. This is a i j. A i j. Okay, so the crash time we denote by a i j for activity i j, and this is b i j the normal time, right? So therefore, um, if I define this rate of crashing of activity i j by c i j, then if the act so t i j is the variable denoting the actual duration, because now that I am going to crash the activities, I do not know what the actual uh, completion time for each activity will be. So, this is what we want to find out through this linear programming formulation, where we want to minimize the total cost. Uh, okay. So, this would be um, T i j is the actual duration and since B i j is the normal one. So, you have crashed the activity by this many days and so this into C i j will give you the cast of, uh, cost of crashing the activity i j. right? And then, uh, you, if you have u t minus u s, uh, you can treat this as 0. So, then u t minus u s. So, t is the um, completion time of the project. Okay. So, suppose I want to say that I want to minimize the cost, given that I want to complete the, complete the project. Uh, in time less than or equal to t, right. So, this is u t minus u s less than or equal to t and then the usual constraint, the linear programming constraint that your u j must be greater than or equal to u i plus t i j or i j and then your t i j should lie between a i j and b i j, because uh, duration you can you do not do not want to go beyond normal uh, time of the compl normal completion time and this you cannot go beyond this also on the left. Now, here this objective function you can write as, because this is a constant. So, I can write this as, uh, okay, I will write this as max summation c i j t i j. Okay. So, because minus of c i j t i j, so that becomes max and that constant is, uh, you know, I mean we can just keep it aside, fine. And then um, see if this is a maximization problem, then my constraints are less kind, fine. And here I will write this constraint as so this come on the top that T i j minus T i j is less than minus A i j, right. The constraint was T i j greater than or equal to A i j, I multiply by minus sign, this is what it becomes, right. Now, just out of academic interest, since we have uh, whenever we have talked of a linear programming formulation, we have also looked at its dual. And I just want to um, show you, even though we will not use this particular uh, formulation here, but anyway, this is of interest in the so sort of academic interest, right. So, I am trying to write the dual to this LPP formulation, and you see that your right hand side, of course, so we will associate the variable v with this constraint, which, uh, and of course, t is your completion time of the project, then x i j with these constraints, and alpha i j beta i j with these two sets of constraints. So, then um, you know, you, if you want to write the dual, you see the objective function will be T v, right. Then you have only uh, with respect to these, because this is 0. So, minus a i j alpha i j summation this and beta i j b i j summation this, right. That is your objective function. And the constraints you see, if you they should look familiar, because these are your uh, flow constraints. Remember for the max flow and min cost flow problems we have written down and you see the dual, but you can also check for yourself. For example, uh, for u s, see uh, u s is appearing here. So, therefore, um, that is a v there, because it will be minus v. So, I have shifted it to, to that side and then how else will u s appear, because this is i j. So, for example, you have like this, suppose you have a j 1, j 2. So, I will just explain for one. So, then you see you have constraints like u s minus u j 1 less than or equal to t s j 1, right, u s minus. So, you will have um, x, x s j because the corresponding variable will be s j, s j 1. So, you will have x s j 1, s 
this J 2, X S J 3. So, here you will have summation this and this and then of course, the, uh, this appeared with a minus sign. So, here of course, this is the only constraint in which it will appear. So, that will this will be 0 and so this will be V. So, minus V which goes here right because associated with this it is minus V. We I shift it to this side right. For all other nodes uh, this thing it will be see, you can see that i j. So, uh, for arcs going out of a node you will add up the x i a j's and for arcs coming into node i you will subtract the, the usual constraints we have been handling right. So, this will be 0 for i not equal to t comma s and similarly here it will be uh, v plus sign. So, when I shift it to this side it will becomes minus v. So, for uh, i equal to t uh, your constraint of course, will be minus this because these will not be there and minus this wherever whichever nodes are connected to t. So, you for example, here you have t. So, you will have like this and for these arcs it will be minus sign. So, this summation will be equal to minus v or i equal to t. And then um, you have the last column with respect to t i j's. So, the column here would be uh, see this will be x i j then minus alpha i j and minus beta i j plus beta i j sorry for this it is plus beta i j right. And since there we have we do not have any uh, sign constraints on T i j remember we have made all these explicit constraints the known and non negativity constraints on T i j s. So, therefore, the corresponding uh, this constraint will be equality here and um, here also uh, we are no, no uh, restrictions on the signs of u i s and therefore, um, though of course, uh, when you start with your uh, u s as 0, all other u i s will also be positive. So, um, uh, but we are not mentioning the constraints explicitly. So, therefore, all these constraints are as equality right. And now, we just can simplify the. Um, so, anyway, uh, these constraints show you that there is a flow going out of, I mean you can look upon v as a flow which is going out of node v and it is reaching node t and uh, the uh, other nodes act as transshipment points. So, these constraints are definitely your flow constraints. Now, this constraint I can uh, simplify and make it in an implicit manner and what I will do is see if x i j is less than c i j, then you can put alpha i j equal to 0 because then beta i j being non negative this sum can make up for c i j. I can just dispense with alpha i j and put it equal to 0. In that case my b i j will become c i j minus x i j which is non negative right. Similarly, if x i j is greater than or equal to c i j then I will put b i j equal to 0 right because this will act as a surplus variable and then I uh, will define alpha i j as x i j minus c i j which is also non negative because x i j right. And then the objective function for the dual see now I can remove my alpha i j b beta i j. So, you see I have taken care of this constraint already and so then I uh, will substitute for alpha i j alpha i j is x i j minus c i j right. So, this is minus a i j um, uh, this is x i j minus c i j right here and then plus b i j c i j minus x i j. And you can look at this constraint. So, you see here the objective function therefore, is not a linear function completely. It is a piecewise linear as we call it and you can see from here that um, see yes because uh, for x i j less than c i j your slope is minus b, b i j minus b i j and here the slope is minus a i j for x i j greater than c i j right this is this and which is uh, which is valid because you have a i j less than or equal to b i j. So, this implies minus a i j is greater than b minus b i j and uh, tan theta is an increasing function right. So, therefore, um, uh, this slope would be so you have uh, minus a i j greater than minus b i. So, the corresponding angle will be bigger right because tan is an increasing function even though they are negative is it ok. So, this is the idea. So, this therefore, the objective function for the dual uh, problem is a piecewise uh, linear function and we can solve this problem as a min cost flow problem right where we have already learned the methods. So, my idea is to show you that um, 
uh, see trying to show you that where all you can get these kind of uh, formulations that we have studied under the banner of linear programming and, and uh, the and the how versatile the simplex algorithm is because you can use it anywhere. Of course, it is possible that you may have some better algorithms for solving this uh, problem, but uh, you see that it can be formulated as a min cost flow problem. Okay, except that the objective function is not linear, and uh, we have methods available for um, uh, for uh, handling uh, piecewise linear functions. Because all you have to take care is the moment your x i j is becoming bigger than c i j, then you have to take this as the cost coefficient, and for x i j less than c i j, you have to. So a small modification in your uh, current network simplex algorithm that we did, uh, you can handle this situation also. So you can solve this problem. Uh, this way, but of course, I will give you a more direct method uh, in the next lecture. Okay, now, um, just try to look at this also. See here, for example, if your completion time of the project is given to be uh, very large, in that case, you know, this constraint will always be satisfied, will never be satisfied as equality if your t is large. In that case, your v will be 0. Right. And so, what it means is that you can look upon V actually because V is not the flow in the network, but when you look at the dual, we are treating it as a, a flow value. But what it will say is that V will be 0, that means you do not need to spend any money on uh, having extra resources to shorten the project duration because it, it is uh, anyway very large. Right. But if T is very small and this constraint is you know, uh, it is not even feasible. That means, this number, uh, because uh, when the UIs you compute, they come out, they satisfy these constraints, but they, this, this uh, constraint is not satisfied, and that means the primal is infeasible, and therefore, um, the dual would be unbounded. That means, any amount of money that you spend in trying to shorten the project would be. Uh, uh, would be uh, would not help you because anyway you cannot meet the current t value so by shortening t you will again earn whatever sp money you spend you will not be able to complete the project in that time so this is the kind of interpretation again the idea was that you see what uh, meanings the dual variables can acquire and they can give you an understanding of the problem so this was the idea behind my uh, even though i know that we will not be solving this problem in this way but i still wanted to show you the uh, how far the applications of uh, linear programming problems can go yes and now here uh, so i think that uh, tells you that uh, the uh, cr uh, crashing of the network uh, uh, project and finding out the optimal duration can be formulated as a linear programming problem. But here again, and I have shown you the dual, which is an interesting problem by itself. But again, um, there are ad hoc methods, which are faster, because as I said, that in case you require your t i j s to be integer valued, then of course, we have not learned the techniques for handling such problems. And also, solving uh, integer programming problems is not a very uh, happy situation because the things get complicated. So uh, we have fortunately uh, nice ad hoc method which will also give you uh, optimal solution. And so I will like to discuss. But because this is a linear programming and its extension course, I thought I should show you the uh, limitations of linear programming also because it always helps to be able to uh, exploit the structure of the problem. And this is, and so as you saw that when finding out the critical path, because the uh, underlying network was acyclic, we could, uh, with a simple labeling technique, find out the uh, longest path or, or in the critical path. Uh, so we did not need the linear programming formulation. And here also, we can formulate the problem as a linear programming problem, but we will not do it because we can, we will exploit the structure of the problem and find out and uh, uh, come up with a faster method for computing the uh, uh, optimal duration of the project. So, I will indicate that through, the, through uh, a simple algorithm and uh, give you the method. So, to uh, show you uh, how network crashing is done or duration of the project, I will go through uh, the uh, pr procedure by uh, showing you uh, the steps through an example. So, this is here um, uh, the example that I have written down. So, network uh, uh, flow problem and um, I have given you the see this cost and this time. So, this is also for normal 
normal duration. When the normal duration of the projects, for example, for project one, for the job one two activity one two, and so the and the normal cost is uh, in thousands of rupees. So okay, this is this is the cost. So this is four thousand rupees is the normal cost for the activity one two. Then the normal time taken to complete the activity would be six days. This is in days, and then uh, this will be crash. Okay, I could have written here crash cost. So this is crash cost in thousands of rupees again. So uh, to crash the activity by one day or total, okay, to reduce the time from uh, six days to three days for activity one two, the uh, cost of crashing it into three days would be five point two thousand. Okay, this is how we are going to read it. So for then, for example, uh, what I have done is here. This is the normal time. This is the crash time. So three days you can crash the activity by three days, and the uh, difference in the cost is twelve hundred. So you can. Uh, so that means twelve hundred divided by three, which is four hundred rupees. So here I have written the rate of crashing the activity by one day. So that is this is the rate of crashing. Similarly, you can verify that for job one three, uh, the rate of crashing. Per day is 500 because here the cost is three and here this is five, so 2000 is the total cost of crashing and this is from uh, five to one, so four days you can crash the activity by four days and uh, therefore the cost of crashing per day would be 2000 divided by four, which is 5000. So you can you know um, understand the. Uh, uh, data given here, and as we see that the critical path, I've already pointed out to you. I mean, this is the example we discussed earlier. So one, two, two, four, four, six, and six, seven. Okay. So this is your critical uh, path, and the total duration is twenty-six days. The near critical path is two days away, which is so the path is one, three, four, six, seven, and its duration is twenty-four days. Now, total normal cost, if you just add up, that means if you don't crash any activity, then this adds up to thirty-one thousand, and um, then the overhead cost. That we said the indirect cost is rupees three thousand per day. That means if you reduce the project duration by one day, then you save uh, rupees three thousand in terms of indirect cost, right? So you have to now balance the uh, cost of crashing and the uh, which will of course increase the cost. But then uh, since you are reducing the uh, duration of the project, the um, uh, overhead uh, cost will come down, right? So this is what we are going to do. So first, let me just outline the. Uh, Algorithm and this is as we we formulated the problem as a linear programming problem, but um, I want to now show you that because your network is very simple, um, uh, we can use an ad hoc method to uh, get to an optimal solution. And this is where you know uh, uh, you can see that optimization is not simply applying an algorithm to a problem; it is also trying to see what is the st structure of the problem and if you can exploit it in some way, or if you can use some other information to get to an optimal solution. You you should do it. So therefore, let me just give you this ad hoc algorithm that we call it, but it gets you the optimal uh, solution also. So first, what we will do is identify. Oh, this is identify. Identify the critical activities, so which will currently our critical path is one, two, four, six, seven. So these activities one, two, two, four, four, six, six, seven are the critical activities. Then we'll select the activity with least rate of crashing. So out of these um, one, two, three, four, four activities, I'll select the one which has the least rate of crashing, and then I would have to determine the number of days by which this activity can be crashed. Which means that see this will be have to be the number of days by which the particular activity I have selected here can be crashed, and the number of days by which the next critical path is away. Because if I crash this to whatever number I uh, um, uh, number of days I can crash this activity, but in the meantime some other path becomes critical which is longer, then it doesn't help me to reduce the uh, project duration, right? So the idea here is that I should be able to uh, reduce the project duration by crashing a particular activity. Okay. So here, for example, if you look at uh, one two, one two can be crashed by three days, right? Which means that I can, if I crash the activity one two to its crash time of three days, uh, this uh, path length will become twenty three. But then the next critical path is twenty four days. Twenty four days. So that means my project duration will not come down to twenty three days. This is the whole idea. So this is important. You have to always choose the minimum of the two numbers. 
So, then once you decide by how much the activity can be crashed, then we will update the network, that which means that you can uh, somewhere note down, note down as to what the current uh, duration of the uh, particular activity which you have crashed, you have to note it somewhere and then you can also compute the improvement in the cost, the reduction in the cost, right. Then continue till some other path becomes critical. So, we will continue doing this 2 and 3 uh, till some other path becomes critical. And of course, here I should have mentioned that since you are uh, looking for an optimum duration, uh, you will also check that uh, you will decide to crash an activity uh, as long as uh, the crashing cost is less than the overhead cost, because you want to cut down on the cost also, right. So, that part I have not added here, but certainly you will keep doing that. So, then continue till some other path becomes critical and then after, uh, if there is more than one path that is critical, then you see you will have to uh, combine, you will have to uh, crash all the paths which are critical simultaneously, right, to be able to reduce the project duration. So, to do that, you will have to pick up on combination of jobs, that means you will have to identify the combination of jobs on the, uh, uh, on all the critical paths, so that uh, by uh, crashing that set of jobs or that combination of jobs, you can reduce the project duration. So, once we do that, then again I will apply the same rule that I used here. I will select the uh, uh, set of activities, which can, uh, which has the least rate of, uh, you will add up the uh, rates of crashing uh, the activities in a particular combination and you will select the one, which has the smallest rate of crashing. So, the same thing you will continue and of course, um, uh, you will uh, to, to obtain the optimal duration, um, uh, crash till the cost of crashing is less than or equal to to the Again, I am not writing it very uh, uh, precisely, but you understand, I should have said that till the rate of cost to, uh, to obtain the optimal duration crash till the cost, the, till the uh, rate of, I should say here, rate of crashing is less than or equal to the uh, overhead cost per day, okay, because you want to balance. So, this is the idea. And the moment you find that your cost of uh, rate of crashing uh, exceeds the overhead cost, then your total cost will also start going up. So, this is the idea. And so, now uh, let us just apply this ad hoc algorithm to this example and we will I will try to show you some steps in detail, so that you can continue with the algorithm. So, you see here um, to shorten the duration of the project following jobs can be crashed. So, these critical jobs critical path is this. So, these are the four jobs on the critical path. So, you see 1, 2 can be crashed by 3 days and the rate is 400 rupees per day. So, I have written down the rates here and these are the days by which each activity can be crashed, right. But yeah, as I told you earlier that job 1, 2 should be crashed by 2 days, because then the path 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, see that becomes also critical, because then the duration of the project, once I crash activity 1, 2, the uh, project duration comes down to 24 days. And so, uh, this path also becomes critical. So, now I need to combine activities on the two critical paths, so that uh, when I crash the two, this uh, set of jobs uh, simultaneously, then the uh, two uh, critical paths will also get crashed and so the project duration will come down, right. So, then here these are the combinations I have written down. If something is missing, you please uh, check for yourself. So, anyway, 1, 2 and 1, 3, see uh, you can see that this, this is the second path. 1, 3, 4, 6, 7. So, these activities are common and these are the two, uh, these are the activities where the two paths differ. So, it can be 1, 2, 1, 3. If I crash both of these, then the total project duration will come down, because then both the paths will get shortened. Similarly, uh, I take the other combination 1, 2 and 3, 4. Okay. So, 1, 2 and 3, 4 um, uh, will help me uh, to re again reduce the project duration, then 1, 3 and 2, 4 will also help me reduce the project duration and then you see here um, uh, 2, 4 and 3, 4. Yes, 
2, 4 and 3, 4. So, I think this takes care of uh, all possible combinations here. And then you see, uh, if I uh, crash 4, 6, so it is common to both the paths. So, then again the project duration comes down and similarly 6, 7, because that is also common to both the paths. right? So, here I have written down the rates again and so you can immediately see that this activity this set of activities 1, 2 and 1, 3 can be crashed. And so, here I can only crash it by 1 day, because 1, 2 now has left only 1 day slack. And this is what I meant, that somewhere you will have to note down, that uh, once you have crashed activity 1, 2 by 2 days, then 1 more day is left for it to be crashed. And so, this cannot, this pair cannot be crashed by more than 1 day, but our criteria is to go by the minimum rate, since we are looking for an optimum solution. So, therefore, uh, this we will decide to crash by uh, one day and in that case the project duration will come down to 23 days right and then you can crash 6 7 by 3 days uh, because 6 7 is the uh, next 1000 rupees uh, rate of crashing others are all higher than 1000 so i'll crash 6 7 by 3 days and then 4 6 can be also crashed by 2 days because this is 1 2 5 0 all these numbers are less than um, See, and here, uh, once I decide to crash this one, this pair, then I cannot do this, because this is ruled out. Remember, 1, 2 has come to its uh, last, uh, the, the, the duration has been reduced to 3 days, I cannot reduce it further. So, then this is ruled out. And all the other two sets of uh, activities are uh, more than 3000. So, I will not consider them right now, since I am looking for an optimal uh, pair, I am trying to get to an optimal solution. So, therefore, these are the three activities which I can crash. right? And so, by doing that, the project duration finally comes down to 18 days. So, both the paths have been reduced to 18 days, but in this case, in the process, now path 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 1, 2, 4, 5. So, this also becomes you see this here, this is 8 and uh, this has come down to 3. So, 3 plus 7, 10, 10 plus uh, 8, 18. So, this path also now has a duration of 18 days. So, you have 3 paths uh, which are critical. right? So, now in that case, you will have to uh, again look at the uh, combination of activities, which when reduced together will reduce the project duration. That means, will reduce the duration of all the three critical paths. So, here uh, again 1, 3 and 2, 4, if you look at 1, 3 and 2, 4, yes, because they are, uh, this one is common to uh, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 also. right? So, therefore, um, I can crash 1, 3 and 2, 4, which will help me to reduce the duration of all the three critical paths. So, uh, this way you can just verify for yourself, that these are the four uh, possibilities in which I can crash all the three critical paths. And uh, so, here again I will choose this one 4, 6, 4, 5, because this the cost of crashing is 2750, which is less than 3000 rupees. Your overhead cost is 3000 rupees per day. So, I can still crash this set of activities and improve my total cost of uh, completing the project. right? So, therefore, this get ca crashed by 2 days and so, yeah, uh, lack of space, maybe I can do it here. Yeah. So, now that means 16 days, 16 days is the project length. Right. Once I crash this set of activities, my project length comes to uh, 16 days. And now, you see that after this, um, of course, uh, yeah, this pair is valid, because 4, 6 can be reduced by how many days? 4, 6 can be reduced by um, 6 and 4. Oh, so, oh no, 4, 6 can be uh, 9 and 5. Okay, so, the 4 days. So, therefore, um, I can also still further crash this, but uh, which is the least one? Yeah, this is right. So, now, that means, 16 days will be your project length, which is your optimal, because after this, uh, I can uh, crash this pair by one day, but the cost is 3250. That means, my cost is going to go up by uh, 250 rupees. So, the moment your cost of reducing or uh, completing the project and the by crashing uh, go starts to go up, then that means you have reached the optimal duration here. And so, you can further reduce the project duration to 15 days for example, by crashing this pair. right? And then if you want to do it further, uh, for example, sometimes for uh, the manager wants to know how far can you go 
and what is the minimum duration even though the cost is may go up, but you still want to know. So, like this is 15 days and then here uh, you will uh, want to crash this one by 2 days. So, that means, it will come down to 13 days if you crash this set of um, activities 1 3 and 2 4. So, if you do this by 2 days then I think this pair is out because 2 4 uh, 2 4 is how much for 2 4 the duration is only 2 days you can uh, crash the activity by 2 days only. So, you can either choose um, this pair or this pair right you can cannot have both. So, therefore, uh, this is where you will stop because 3500 0, 0 is lower than 3750. So, you would still want to know what the minimum duration and then corresponding co cost should also be the smallest. So, therefore, if I decide to crash this pair my uh, duration will come down to 13 days. So, this is your minimum duration. This is your minimum duration and uh, after this sit down and see for yourself that you cannot crash the activities any further even if you want to increase the cost. So, this is your minimum duration and uh, 16 days is your optimum duration. So, essentially um, I have not made the actual uh, cost computations which you can do it along each of this because you know by how much you are reducing the cost. So, you started with the initial cost of 31000. Now, you can go on making the reduction in the cost and you will come up to here right which means that for example, uh, this was 3 days so 400. So, here you were making the reduction of uh, 9000 minus 1200 right this many rupees this was the reduction. 9000 minus uh, minus. So, you will subtract this number from 31000 to get the uh, cost of crashing the uh, project by 3 days right. Similarly, when you chose this pair here and this was by 1 day. So, then the reduction here would be 3000 minus 900. So, that is the amount you will reduce from your total cost. So, please do this computation and you will see that uh, the cost keeps coming down and then you will stop at 16 days which will give you the optimum cost. So, here what we want to say is that it may not always be necessary uh, that you uh, to get the uh, uh, minimum duration you have to crash every activity that may not be feasible and in fact it will not reduce the pro project duration beyond 13 days. So, uh, do not say that uh, if you want to find out the minimum duration of the project that you just add up the uh, active uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, crash duration of each activity and uh, you know say that that will be the minimum duration. That means, you compute the you you take the uh, crash uh, duration of each activity and then compute the longest path uh, that may not e be equal to 13 days. I mean that will not be the minimum duration that is what I am trying to say ok. Uh, that is uh, that may still not require each activity to be crashed, because after all you know that the project duration is determined by the critical path. So, essentially uh, the activities which become critical they have to be crashed, so that you get the minimum duration. So, uh, some activities for example, here 2 6 I do not think figures in any of the reduction thing. So, when you compute the minimum duration your 2 6 continues to be uh, because this path is 6 11 and 11 for 15. So, at 13 uh, the duration uh, ok, no no uh, you crash this to 3 days and this, this uh, activity 6 7 we crash to uh, how much we crash 6 7 by 3 days ok. So, that means, here this is 1. So, this path will continue to be 3 plus 5 8 8 and 1 9 right. So, you see 9 is much below 13 therefore, there is no need for activity 2 6 to be crashed. I mean this is one example I can give you right away right. So, therefore, minimum duration does not mean that each activity of the project will be uh, performed at its crash time. Only the activities which help to reduce the uh, duration of the project they have to be crashed ok. So, essentially I have now this is um, of course, you might say that lot of this thing can be programmed easily, but you can see what is happening from day to day. And so, essentially and this is what a manager likes to know that uh, from the day to day if you are managing a project how it is happening, uh, how the cost is improving, what activities need to be crashed and so on. So, a uh, nice ad hoc way which can be uh, very easily implemented, but of course, you, you uh, when the project is large you might say that the number of say for example, these combinations will go up 
but again you have simple rules to identify the combination of activities which will help to reduce the project duration and so on. So, therefore, what I am trying to say again which I said in the beginning is that uh, you know uh, in optimization you do not have to be strictly go by certain rules. You, you may have an algorithm to guide you to take you towards a uh, optimal solution, but in the process you can also exploit the structure and try to use some common sense and whatever information you can you can have to uh, to go to the optimal solution this is the whole idea okay